Here we go. So McBroom, you can see immediately the southpaw boxer of the two. He sent to ring. Now the tail of the tape last time was Austin came out fast, in a hurry, and put Gibb down in that first round. Obviously a little bit more of a patient approach here from Austin to start this one. That's what I was saying, and we're going to get an, a patient Austin. He hasn't been talking. He's looking to box here. He's not going to, I don't think he's going to look to try to try to knock him out, right? He's going to try to outbox him and use his skill. And you can see already immediately that Gibb is circling the right way for a southpaw. The way we would opposite normally, he's doing the right thing because he's wary of that left hand. Yeah, he's switching angles here. He's making sure he keeps himself safe. And you're already seeing a battle of the lead hands back and forth. These guys are pawing out that jab, feigning each other. It's going to be a chess match this time. That's a nice left hand from Austin right and away. That's what we're going to see. We're going to see Austin try to be more selective with his shots. He knows he hit him before, and he knows that when he was going first a lot, Gibb was able to capitalize on, on those exchanges when, when Austin would just overextend. But if he's here within his stance, he's, he's tough to beat, man. And in terms of a frenetic evening's work, this is the most measured opening round we've seen tonight, Wade. Yeah, absolutely. Both guys know what's at stake here. I mean, it's high stakes for a reason. Something I want you guys to watch is that lead foot battle as well. Both guys have already stepped on each other's toes a couple times and gotten a little shaky with the slippage, both back and forth. So it's going to be key. Who gets that foot on the outside and opens up that lane down the pipe? And Sensei, forget all the talk about how much at stake and all the, the, the talk beforehand. I've already seen from this opening round, there's mutual respect there. Oh, big time. And that's what you did not see last time. Austin did not respect Gibb whatsoever. But this time, he's got to, right? With getting knocked down and getting knocked out like that has got to be tough. And you want to make sure you come out here and be smart. I was Gibb testing the water a little bit, coming with that lead backhand, three-punch combo behind it. Didn't really set it up, but just wanted to see what time Austin was on. Is he, is he ready to defend that shot? But what it did show was sweet footwork from Austin there. Yeah, he's, he's shown a lot better defensive footwork this time around, whereas the first fight he wanted to lunge in with that left hand and almost lead with it. This time, again, more balance from Austin and keeping Gibb at bay. And Sensei, for tonight's action, we've got our first chess match, really. Oh yeah, and sometimes a rematch does that, right? When you get when you get cracked a bit, and it, you don't want to be that first guy to go down again in, in, in the rematch. So you're going to see this. Um, but again, Austin can only go on the back foot so much. Gibb is going to at some point pull that trigger, and then Austin's got to do that right there. That's, that's what, what he's he was looking, looking for. for. <laughs> 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 Look at that. Going. But the that twins. Is, that's what he's looking for. And again, that's just the switch in the tempo from fight one to fight two. Austin knows that. Running into range is only going to lead to one-way traffic, not in his favor, but the counter shots off the pressure can be something he can utilize. You know, at what point does Gibb just decide, you know what, I'm going to step on the front foot and go back to my style and try to pressure him? I think that left hand from Austin toward the end of the round definitely got his attention. I don't think it hurt him, but it got his attention. And that's why I think Gibb is a little bit less forward than maybe we saw him after the first fight. I think you're right, Wade. That was close. That was almost on the button, and it could have been the same as the first bout with a, a knockdown again. But Austin's got to pull the trigger here. You see, Austin struggled with this in the first fight. If you're going to go, you have to go. Because if you don't, Gibbs going to follow with 2-3-4 right behind it. Austin inviting, inviting a brawl here. And do you know what I think? Because when Gibb goes for the ball, do you notice how he squares up? He sets himself square, which is perfect for that left hand of Austin McBroom. Yeah, Austin, if he's if he's not too high, there's a the thing with Austin too. When he gets into these flurries, his level goes straight up, and he is standing straight up and flurrying from his hips, and that chin gets exposed. Malcolm, if you're Gibb, that's a rewrite of fight number one, and you take advantage. There's that big right hand again. Gibb is looking to set that up. Austin's got to be careful. He keeps his backhand quite low. And like you said, chin up high. Both of you have mentioned at separate points, careful. For me, it seems that the first mistake could actually be key in about this close. It absolutely can be. And being too careful will get you hurt. And Austin's starting to see that. Gibbs opening up a little more here while Austin's still being a little bit more reserved. Gibbs on the front foot and making him pay for it. That's what I was thinking. Austin can only be on the back foot so long. Gibbs is going to only be so patient. At some point, he's just going to start throwing and make it ugly, right? He's going to put pressure. And Austin has to get respect by landing power punches in, in return. 
when when the margins are so slim and what the judges are looking for at the moment in round two if you're looking for ring generalship it's Gibb that is giving them that absolutely this is what he gives every fight he's looking to throw bombs but when he resets he only sets to the middle and now Austin trying to make that statement and say no I'm not gonna stay on the corner he should have thrown that left again that's the thing with Austin he has to let it go you can't faint 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 and not throw you gotta let it go Sensei, he's setting up, then he's stopping short. He does the setup, he gets in position, and he doesn't throw that left twice, uh, right in the center of the ring. Might be some flashbacks there, right? You know, what happens when you have a rematch with somebody, you want to do it, but you want you want to make sure that it's the right time, because you don't want to be wrong again and end up on the canvas. And again, you see Austin stand straight up in some of these exchanges. It is naturally the lower man. And these shots are going to come heavy, and they're going to come right at his chin. Austin's got to either sink his hips, dip his chin, or get out of range. Oh, lead hook. That was big. That was a big shot Austin just landed. Give his hurt here. Give his hurt here. And gives natural instinct Another is to right fight when he's there. hurt. Austin's got to be smart here. I can't fade him to death. I've landed a big one. Go for it again. But picking up on what both of you said earlier, I think both have now realized I'm not going to take this back with that level of caution. That level of caution has really dropped. Yeah, listen, now we're starting to open up a little more, especially from Gibb. You saw him start this round front foot, meeting Austin in the corner. Austin's got to match that energy and come out with something big. Yeah, Gibb is always going to be switched on. Austin's got to make sure he doesn't take the foot off the gas here. He lands something significant, but he can't just take a picture. Just enjoy that. The thing is, with that exchange, Austin was working around the other way. If he steps the other way, he sets up his left perfectly. If he steps outside the left Oh, of man, they're trading, guys. Yeah, Austin has to be able to not only step outside and change the angle, but keep his level down. Every time they clinch or exchange inside, he leans in and that chin goes up in the air. Gibbs going to find it sooner or later. But if you watch Austin, he's moving towards the right hand of Gibbs, where he needs really to slip the other way, and that's freezes left for that big shot. Yeah, yeah, I think he might be trying to load for that left hand as he's trying to counter with that straight. You know, Austin, what happened with last time, only, only did he get hurt, but when he got tired, he tended to get sloppy, right? And that's the thing, he can't let his fatigue here, his, the first win go, and then just throw the, the caution to the win and let the technique go. He's got to stay locked in and stay focused. You can see right now, a little bit of fatigue is setting in for Austin because what did we say the first fight? When he started throwing that left hand and falling in behind it, that's when we knew things oh, were going to get a different. big left hook there. That was flush, lads. And here he comes again, leaning in, trying to clinch, kid. A, a big smart, body shot here. It's a smart strategy. Something's What's happening, happening here? Uh-oh. It, it's, it's looked like he's being sick or... He's getting a count. Whatever's happened, whether it's what happened. Know, it's his shoulder? It's his shoulder. Or a leg? I don't know. If that's his shoulder. We're actually going to wave this thing off. He's not even turning to answer the referee right now. He's, he's going to turn and face him. He's going to turn and face him. He's screaming. He's screaming at him. He's saying no. The referee's going to call it if he doesn't turn. That's it. He's that's called it. it. He's mm -hmm. called it. Oh, man. I mean, the corner's angry, but you can't turn away like that. You cannot just you, turn away. You just away. gotta let him know what's going on there. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner, Anisan Gabe. Gabe, all the talk about this rematch, about can, can Gibb do it again? Well, you did it again. You got that first win under your belt. How do you feel? There's no room to celebrate. We're moving on to the semi-finals. Jarvis, I'm coming for you. And whoever's in the final, I'm coming for you next. I'm telling you right now, it's a man on a mission, Gibb, with all the work you put in during Ramadan. This is a tough, tough camp, and you showed nothing stops you. What's your message to everybody that came out and supported you tonight? Yo, know, the, the camp has been excellent. I feel great at this weight compared to my first pro fight. What a difference in speed, power, and athleticism that I feel right now. I like so much respect for Austin McBroom for coming back at such a tough tournament. So I got a lot of respect for him, and yeah, I'm excited for the rest of the tournament. Like you said, Jarvis is next. You watched this fight with Tom Zanetti. Anything there for you to be concerned about, or is this just another fight for you? I saw Zanetti quit. I saw Zanetti quit. I wouldn't think Zanetti would quit. 
but you know I ain't gonna quit. You know I'm gonna keep coming forward, my pressure's relentless, and this time I'm fueled up. He's fueled up and he juiced up this crowd tonight. Their winner in the main event, Anissa!